you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. On one of our vacations to New England, Annette and I visited one of Robert Frost's homes in New Hampshire. This particular house was maintained by an organization that was promoting Frost's poetry. Each summer, in order to promote that poetry, they chose a poet in residence to live in the house. Another feature of this home was that it had a walking trail in the woods surrounding the property. And along the trail, it had a series of pedestals with Frost poetry on them, so that anyone sauntering through the woods could read his poetry and meditate on it. Well, at one point, the trail had a pedestal at a fork in the trail. The poem, of course, was the road less traveled by and making all the difference. Well, at this fork of the road, I decided to take the less traveled route. I learned too late, though, that this, although this trail was less traveled by humans, it was frequently traveled by the poet in residence's dog. And it, as I entered and came back to the car, I noted the smell of doggy doo-doo on my pants. Now, fortunately, our suitcases were in the trunk, had an extra pair, and we had a Ziploc bag to house the offending trousers. So this morning, I invite you to imagine you're standing at a fork in a road. To one side, there is a path that looks easy and comfortable. It's wide. You see many people walking down that path. On the other side is a road that's narrow. It's rocky, hard to walk. But there's just something about it. It looks like it may lead to a better place a place where you might just really like to be in the end. So now, you have to freely choose which way you're going to go. This is the sort of thing that's happening in our first lesson from Joshua. He was a leader of the Israelites. And in our lesson, he has gathered the people together to give them a choice. They must decide which path they are going to take and whom they're going to serve. So let's see if it teaches us something about our lives, especially when it comes to following God. Joshua led the Israelites for many years. They went through a lot together. Forty years of wandering in the wilderness, crossing the Reed or Red Sea on dry land to escape slavery in Egypt, crossing across the Jordan River also on dry land so they could enter the Promised Land. Then they marched around Jericho and the walls fell down. They fought numerous battles to take the land that God had promised to Abraham. And so now they're finally settling in the land that God had promised to them. Joshua is getting old. His time as a leader is almost up. So Joshua gathered all the tribes at a place called Shechem. Shechem was the place where God first promised Abraham that his descendants would inherit the land. So it made a lot of sense that Joshua would gather the people at Shechem to talk about their future. Joshua begins by reminding the people of their history, telling them how their ancestors lived behind the Euphrates and worshipped pagan gods. How God called Abraham and things changed. 
how God brought them out of the years of slavery in Egypt, took care of them in the wilderness, and gave them the land they were now living in. Joshua wanted them to remember what God had done for them. Then Joshua issues his challenge. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors, the ones you worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if the serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua made it clear they had to choose. They could not keep worshiping other gods and follow the one true God. It was one or the other, but not both. In our lives, we make a lot of choices. Many times a day, we choose what to eat, what kind of cereal we're going to have at breakfast, what kind of clothing are we going to wear, who we hang out with, how we spend our time. Some choices are small, and they don't matter very much like having Cheerios or Rice Krispies. But the other choices can be big, and they can change the direction of our entire lives. Choosing whom, whom to serve, whom to follow, is one of those big choices. It's not just about saying we believe in God. It's about how we live our lives, what we do what we value, what we put first in our lives. Joshua was asking the people to make a decision about who would be the most important in their life. I'd like to kind of illustrate here with a story from an old Cherokee chief. He was teaching his grandson about life. Here's what he had to say to his grandson. A fight is going on inside of me between two wolves. One wolf is evil. He is angry, envious, greedy, arrogant, and lies. The other wolf is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, and truth. The same fight is going on inside of you and inside every other person, too. The grandson paused for a moment and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? The old chief replied, the one you feed. The story illustrates the choices we make day to day. The decisions which wolf grows and which one shrinks. Joshua was asking the Israelites to choose which wolf they were going to feed, their old ways of worshiping pagan gods or the new way of following the Lord their God, the one true God. After Joshua's challenge, the people respond with a firm decision. This is what they said. Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us our entire journey and among all the nations through which we have traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in this land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. The Israelites remembered what God had done for them, and they realized that following other gods 
was not a wise choice of action when the one true God had done so much for them. So they chose to serve the Lord. But Joshua didn't stop there. He wanted to make absolutely sure the people understood the seriousness of this decision. He warned them that following God wasn't something to take lightly. It wasn't just about saying the right words. It was about living the right way. People insisted they wanted to serve the Lord. So Joshua made a covenant with them that day, setting up a stone as a witness to their choice. So now, what does this mean for us? We certainly aren't worshiping statues like the Israelites, but we still have our idols. We still face choices about what we're going to serve. There are many things in our lives that take the place of God, if we'll let them do so. Things like money, popularity, success, comfort, or convenience. And the list goes on. Following God means putting God first in our lives, even when it's hard. Even when the other path looks easier or looks like it's going to be a lot more fun. It means making choices that honor God, not just when someone is watching, but even when no one else knows. When Joshua put these choices to the Israelites, the easiest path would have been to blend in with the natives and worship their gods their way. However, we can never serve God and false gods. The narrow path, the one that leads to God, is the one that brings true life and joy. So how do we choose to follow in our lives today? Here are a couple practical steps. One, pray regularly. Prayer is how we talk to God and stay connected. Two, read the Bible. It's our map. It shows us the way to go. And reading just a little bit each day helps us learn of who God is and how God wants us to live. Three, surround yourselves with good friends. The people we hang out with have a big influence on us. Choose friends that encourage you to make good choices and follow God. Four, make godly choices, whether it's how we spend our time, how we treat others, how we speak to others. Always ask yourself this, is this something that honors God? And five, trust God in difficult times. Just like the Israelites had to trust God when they faced battles, we have to trust God when life gets difficult. Remember that God is with you and has a plan for your life, a good plan for your life. Joshua's challenge to the Israelites is really the same challenge we face today. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. It's a choice we make every single day. And it's not about words. It's about living and showing we truly follow God. So as we go about our lives, we need to remember to choose the path that leads to God. It may not be the easiest path, but it's the one that brings true peace, joy, and eternal life. So choose in confidence, just like Joshua and the Israelites did. And then we can say, along with Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the story of Joshua and the Israelites and for the reminder that we have to choose whom we will serve. Help us always choose you, 
even when the path is hard. Give us the strength to make godly choices every day and surround us with people who encourage us in our faith. We thank you for being with us and guiding us. We choose to follow you now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise.